Though never fast enough, new therapies are constantly being studied and evaluated for PTSD and TBI. During the many years of war, additional symptoms of those suffering from PTSD and TBI prompted scientists and doctors to look at new ways to treat these conditions and improve the symptoms. We think of the symptoms of brain trauma in terms of organic brain injury, both at the time of injury from a blast or IED and later when the brain endures secondary injury with increased pressure within the skull. Physical injury to the brain may also cause a precipitous drop in hormone levels, contributing to many psychological and physical symptoms such as anger outbursts, depression, anxiety, mood swings, memory loss, and concentration. Many vets also experience high blood pressure, diabetes, loss of sex drive, obesity, muscle weakness, and in women, menstrual changes. Most symptoms strongly impact quality of life for the veteran and their families. And with this large array of symptoms, TBI may be missed or undiagnosed and put in the PTSD category, which many of you have experienced. Enter medical curiosity, when a connection was shown between TBI and reduced pituitary function following a brain injury. These hormonal deficits cover hormones regulating the thyroid and adrenal glands, growth hormones, and estrogen and testosterone. Researchers at the VA Puget Sound and the University of Washington found that up to 42% of veterans with blast injuries could suffer from low levels of pituitary hormones, causing some of the most troubling and lingering effects of TBI, such as fatigue, insomnia, memory loss, sexual problems, depression, concentration, and mood disturbances. Consider this quote from the researchers. If PTSD does not resolve, it's very possibly due to hormone deficiencies. The Department Center of Excellence for Psychological and Brain Health recommends screening for NED, N-E-D, or neuroendocrine dysfunction in veterans with a history of TBI and symptoms lasting longer than three months or which present within three years of injury. You can find more about hormone therapy often administered through a pellet through a shallow incision for roughly three months continuous use and possibly through oral supplements by raising this possibility with your primary care physician. This is still a lesser known therapy but showing real promise for improved quality of life. You can learn more by researching on usmedicine.com.